Welcome everybody to the 21st online cultural majlis. Uh, my name is Sultan Saud Al-Qasmi and it gives me great pleasure to uh, be hosting our guest today, uh, Ufemia Rizq, who is joining us from uh, Montreal. Uh, just a reminder that all the previous talks are available on YouTube, so you can go back and watch them if you like. Uh, to introduce uh, our uh, guest tonight, I have uh, two very special people, uh, my students uh, at Boston College, uh, Ines uh, and Nadine. Uh, Ines, who is joining us from uh, Mexico City, is an incoming sophomore student at Boston College studying political science and Islamic studies, while Nadine, who is joining us from Chicago, will be a sophomore at Northwestern next year and is majoring in economics and political science. I leave it to both of you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, just a quick introduction for Ufemia. Uh, please excuse my pronunciation. I don't speak French. Um, Ufemia Risk studied at the American University of Beirut and University de Paris Sorbonne and trained at Faronessa Zaid's private art school in Amman. In her work, she combines thoughtful introspection with a desire to explore the mysteries of the universe. Her paintings, therefore, often make use of geometry as well as gestural abstraction to present personal idiosyncratic reflections on the physical world around her. Ufemia has had numerous solo exhibitions throughout her career, including at Galerie Katia Granoff in Paris in 1979, and at Galerie Simone Bles in Monterreal, and Centro Cultural San Michel in Milan, both in 1993. Ufemia has received several awards for her artistic work, including at the Salon de Paris, Osaka International Festival, and Bienal de Lyon. She currently lives and works in Monterreal. So welcome, Ufemia. Thank you so much uh, to Ines and Nadine. Great job, as usual. Uh, Ufemia, it's a wonderful uh, occasion to be hosting you here. Uh, I'm very, very uh, glad to be uh, hosting the second interview. Of course, Ines and Nadine had interviewed you earlier uh, in the spring uh, in New York but this is an extended uh, take of that interview. Uh, I will begin by sharing uh, my screen and we will go on a, a very special journey of uh, your work and uh, at least some of your work. So there we go. Share screen. Okay, can you see my screen everybody? Okay, so Ufemia, I will be asking you some questions about some of your work, but before we speak about your work, I'd like to ask about Ufemia herself. Ufemia, is it, uh, can you tell us a little bit about where were you born and uh, who are these individuals in these photos? Hello, Sultan. Thank you for uh, hosting me. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this picture to the left is when I was a baby. Uh, to the right is my late father, Dr. Wahbi Jabaji, who was an ophthalmologist who studied medicine at the Université de Lausanne and uh, graduated and uh, went to, to continue his studies in London University to specialize in ophthalmology. Besides being a doctor, he was a violinist and a good photographer. Uh, to the left, my late mother, born Laila Freji, is uh, of Lebanese origin. Her family in the early 20th century uh, emigrated from Lebanon to Egypt. And she happened to be born in Sudan because her father then was working with the Egyptian government and he was posted in Sudan. She's a pianist, uh, an accomplished pianist. To the right is my, uh, it's, it's, it's my picture of me with my mother, that's in Lebanon, because uh, uh, in 1948, we were driven out of our country. Uh, I was born in Jaffa, Palestine, and uh, we left our country to go to Lebanon. My mother being of Lebanese origin, they chose to move to Lebanon. Uh, that's uh, where I was raised and uh, I went to school. I went to the French school in Lebanon and uh, later in my senior year, I uh, transferred to the English school, to the VLTC. So, and the picture to the right, my parents 
uh, left uh, Lebanon in the early 50s because my father went to Jordan in the early 50s and he opened the first ophthalmology clinic in Jordan. He was the first ophthalmologist, by the way. And later, my mother followed him with my two youngest sisters and I stayed in a boarding school in Lebanon. Uh, all the rest of my studies, I was in boarding school. So they used to come and visit us in boarding school and they used to come and take us out on the weekends. So this photo is one of the outings where your family took you out. One of the outings when I was out of school when my parents used to come and take us out on the weekend. Wonderful. So going forward, uh, we see here a collection of photos. Um, I, the two I'd like to ask about, first of all, um, I don't usually ask this, but this dress on the left is so beautiful. Can you tell us where you got it from and what? Oh, the... thank you, thank you. This is my graduation dress. My my high school graduation dress. That's on the day of the graduation. Uh, well, this is from Beirut. You know, I was living in Beirut, and Beirut they always had good designers and good taste. So uh, it was some Lebanese designer. I don't remember the name. Uh, and the photo on the right, I believe this is also in Beirut. You are with your friend here. The photo, uh, yes. The photo on the right is uh, at the AUB. After high school, I went the first year at the AUB. That's with my best friend uh, on campus. And, and AUB the is the American the University. The lower one is my student ID. Okay. Okay, so uh, for those who don't know, AUB is the American University of Beirut, and Ufemia is the uh, is the girl wearing the white uh, dress on the right image. Um, and then we see a banner here with Jordan, which I which I think we'll we'll talk about in the next slide a little bit. Yeah. So uh, this is such an interesting image, and it is it's uh, it I could read the words Miss World 1959-1960. Yeah. Can you tell us? Can you tell us about the road to Miss World? What happened? Okay. How did you end up there? Okay, for the first time in Jordan, there was going to be a big event, the election of Miss Jordan. So everyone was excited. Everyone, uh, you know, was, I was so excited to attend this uh, event. I went with my parents with no idea at all that I was going to join because the next morning I was supposed to fly and go back to boarding school. But I went for the fun, just, you know, it was a big event. Uh, by pressure from here and there, the tables around us, I don't know how, I ended up uh, participating uh, and I ended up uh, being elected Miss Jordan. You know, in th those days, it was, uh, you know, it's the first time Miss Jordan, it was, I mean, he did not apply or do such things before entering a competition. Just the, 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 the young girls who were at the, at the party, uh, they, they just uh, entered the competition. And uh, uh, the picture to the right now, there was going to be the Miss World in London, uh, was held in November of that same year. And uh, luckily, my school being a British school, and the competition was in London, they gave me the permission and allowed me to go to that competition. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the English school was very strict. They were known to be very strict. Uh, plus, I had to convince my parents first to go to join the Miss World, to participate. It wasn't that easy. You're talking 1959. Uh, finally, uh, my mother accompanied me, and we went all together. Well, uh, going there, it was, uh, it was an overwhelming experience for me as a teenage student, school girl, going, not knowing what to expect. Uh, there, you know, at the, you know how it is, uh, the reporters at the airport and the press, and then the big, uh, the beautiful luncheon at the House of Commons for all the participants. It was, uh, and all the events leading to that big day, of the, uh, of the Miss World was something really, was great. And I was very proud to represent my country, Jordan, with all the rest of the world. And uh, after the competition, after the Miss World, the next day, flying back to school, to boarding school. That was it. 
uh, thank you so much. And it, it really is an amazing photo. Uh, I don't know where you are in this image on the right. Do you actually know where you're standing? Uh, here? Uh, on the tell? right, I am uh, top right. I am the third one to the left. Third one from the right, third one to the left. Okay. From the right, third top, one to the right, left. Top right here. So one, two, yes. three. That's you maybe here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. What an interesting, fascinating story. And of course, the Miss World, uh, Miss Jordan competition stopped in 19, uh, I think 1967. So it only 67. carried on. Yes, it only carried on for a, a few short years. Uh, but uh, congratulations, nonetheless. Uh, going on, you had already been an artist by, by then. So by 1959 or 60, you had already started drawing, not professionally, but uh, maybe as a hobby. Is that right? Uh, right, you know, since I was since uh, at school, I always was drawing on my books, left, right, and center. And uh, by the way, at school, I always had full marks for my geography maps. And uh, other girls, they would they would complain, who gets a full mark on in geography? Uh, but you know, I used to enjoy you know these small details, do them to by the millimeter. I enjoyed it. So, uh, I used to, I was drawing always. Thank you. Uh, Femia, now we are moving into the early 60s, which is um, the time in which you and your husband, Rize, moved to Cairo. Uh, you spent most of the 1960s in Cairo. Um, what took you to Cairo? What, how long were you there? I see this image on the right. Um, I mean... Yes. It's unusual to have a photograph taken in the airport, maybe in the 1960s. Is this usual for you? Uh, <laughs> uh, this was upon my arrival, you know, in 61, I got married to Risk Risk. Uh, and uh, he was living in Egypt then. The, it, that's where he was working and living in Egypt. Uh, so I had to leave Lebanon and Jordan and go to live in Egypt. I lived in Egypt all the 60s. Uh, you know, the 60s, living in Egypt was a great cultural experience for me. And I loved art, and it was a great, uh, to have uh, first my, my neighbor next door, my back to back, my neighbor was Gamal Essagini, the famous sculptor. And he had just finished uh, drawing the, uh, finished the sculpting the Gamal Abdel Nasser statue, and he was very famous. And, you know, I was uh, so excited that he was our neighbor. I used to see his, uh, his sculptures uh, in his backyard. Uh, and uh, the picture uh, to the you. left. Yes. You want to know about the picture to the left? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, these are, these are your, your daughters, I assume. No, no, no. The one to the left is my daughter, next to my husband, Leila. Yeah. And the one to the left was her best friend. I think that's Gul Gula, the daughter of Samira Ahmad. There was the famous, uh, she was a famous, uh, her mother was a famous uh, artist, actress. Yes. She was with school at her at the Mer de Jeu. That was their ceremony, the, the, the final ceremony of the KG. That's in okay. 1967. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so here we're moving uh, into the 1970s. So you spent the 60s in uh, Egypt, you went back to Jordan in the 1970s. Um, we see maybe the, the first yes. time that your work is featured in a publication. It's a famous publication. Tell us about the circumstances. Um, what led you to be featured here? We, we, we saw a big jump from uh, being a, 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 hobby, a hobbyist artist into being a professional artist. Yes, in 68, uh, we moved to Jordan, where I discovered, you know, the Nabataeans, the Nabataean, uh, you know, Petra and the Nabataean civilization. It was, you know, a great, uh, great uh, inspiration for me. And uh, I took uh, drawing classes with a, a well-known artist now and critic, Nelly Bajali Lama. But I had never taken really uh, art until I met Farinisa Zaid, Princess Farinisa Zaid, in 1976. That's when I took painting seriously. And here, 
it is the first uh, when I was going, before my first exhibition. Uh, that's the Revue Art. It's a magazine. It's a, it was an important magazine, and the editor was uh, André Parino, a, an important art critic then. Uh, he made a big article about Fahre Nissa and her institute on the occasion of my uh, first exhibition. That's the first time somebody wrote about me, about my art. Thank you. So we will hear in the next uh, few minutes about who Fahre Nissa was uh, and what's yes. the, what the relationship is between uh, Fahre Nissa uh, and uh, her students uh, as well. But we, before we go there, there was this interesting set of photos that uh, that you sent me. And uh, this is an art exhibition that's a bit unusual because of the location of the exhibition. Uh, this exhibition was just before going to Paris, to exhibit in Paris. Uh, I was supposed to show my work. I decided, not I was not supposed to, I decided with the Princess Fahre Nessa, my teacher, that we had to show my work before going to Paris. At the time, you know, uh, Jordan, Amman, there wasn't that big art scene at the time. We had, you had, you had uh, some very good artists, but there were no galleries. There were only just one gallery at the Intercontinental Hotel that was a very small gallery. So we decided I would empty my apartment and have my first exhibition in my house. And it was a big, you know, it was a big job to empty your house just to have an, upper, uh, an exhibition. But uh, it turned out to be a great success and so many people came, uh, reporters, press, uh, uh, photographers. It turned out to be a great success. More than 200 people showed up. And amongst those who showed up, at the bottom right photo, there is a, a lady wearing a black dress. And this is oh, Of course. Nisa. Yeah. And this is Fahre Nissa, my art teacher. Your art yeah. teacher, Fahre Nissa, who, uh, yeah. who My master, not art class. teacher, my master. Yes. <laughs> so maybe before we talk about Fahre Nissa, who seems to be very interested and impressed by your work, no surprise. But before we talk about Fahra Nissa, I just want to draw uh, the uh, audience's attention to two artworks. Uh, the one here on the left, uh, hanging above. This work is coming up soon because of who, who had bought this work. It's a lovely work. You can see it also here. And it was shared by, uh, by the, uh, the monarch in Jordan then. Seeing this image, so keep it in mind. In a few slides, you will be seeing this work. And this work uh, is the work that's also coming back uh, the, at the end of the slide because it's now on display in New York. So I just want to draw your attention to these two paintings uh, and we will carry on now. I want to talk about some of your work, um, Sit Ophemia. Uh, these yeah. three paintings are very vibrant. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's this vi red, re vibrant red, this deep green. Um, can you tell us about your style? your inspiration, your, your use of colors, and, and finally, the titles of your artworks, because they're quite interesting. This is called The Eye of the Dragon. Um, this is the, uh, the unknown travels, the unknown through thought. Um, yes. And this one has a very special story, which I hope you will share. Uh, the, which one you mean? The bottom right, oh. the Chateau uh, Angl oh. Anglouti. Yeah. Uh, we start with the we start with, with the dragon's eye. Dragon's eye. The, the, the dragon's eye uh, was uh, you know I I work with the, you know red is one of my favorite colors. It's determination. It's power. It's passion. It's you put it all together, and uh, uh, and the geometry. There's there's almost everywhere geometry in my. I, I am into the geometric, uh, geometric art. For me, art is the creation of an inner world to penetrate all the mysteries of the universe. Of course, you try, but you penetrate as much as you can. Uh, the title, uh, The Dragon's Eye, it was His Majesty King Hussein who gave this title. He saw the poster somewhere 
It was the poster of the exhibition. So we gave it this title. Uh, the upper uh, painting, the, the unknown through thought, the, the mystery of the unknown. Uh, also, green is one of my favorite colors, the color of summer, spring, rebirth. Uh, you know, I'm a very optimistic uh, person. Like uh, Farin Misazeh taught me la joie de vivre, you know? Uh, so it's always, I'm always in the optimist, on the optimistic side of life. Despite all my, term, you know, my life has been like a roller coaster with all the ups and downs. But uh, so here, uh, this painting was very important to, I, to me because uh, it was at the exhibition at Katya Granov first exhibited in 77, there was this man uh, standing in front of this painting for a long time. So I went and I talked to him. I told him, I am the artist. I see that you are watching this game for uh, this uh, painting for a long time. What do yes. you think? He told me, oh, this is, this is not a painting. This is the four voices of Bach. So for me, it was so interesting to hear that answer because Bach is one of my favorite uh, composers. Mm -hmm. But I never thought of Bach. You know, I paint with music. Music, you know, music is art, music, uh, you know. But uh, so that's the story of this painting. And this person happened to be a, an important art critic, a, an important French art critic. So you've had your uh, artworks named by uh, the kings and uh, appraised by... No, the uh, only great... one, only one. <laughs> only one. Because uh, okay. he saw it at a, at a friend's house yes. uh, and uh, he gave the title. Okay, thank you. So uh, now we, I think we're going to uh, maybe one of the most consequential and uh, important relationships in your life, maybe outside your immediate family, is your friendship and your... Uh, tutelage and your mentorship under uh, Fakhr Nisa Zaid. Um, briefly, Fakhr Nisa Zaid uh, was a Turkish born uh, um, artist who uh, spent time, who married uh, from, uh, from the ruling family of Iraq, who then had moved to uh, Europe and then finally settled in Jordan, where she started a, a school that is seen as one of the most important schools uh, that taught women art, uh, maybe in the 20th century, uh, especially in the Middle East. Um, she had uh, over a dozen students of which Ufemia was one. And uh, you started studying under her in the mid 1970s, is that correct? Yes, in 76. Tell us a little bit about your friendship and your relationship. How did you meet uh, Fakhr Nisa Zaid? Uh, how was she, uh, was she approachable? Was, she, was it by chance? How was the meeting uh, circumstances? Okay, okay. I had uh, the first time I met Farah Nisa Zaid was at her open house. You know, she had this big open house, this lavish party with all the society of Jordan. But I didn't really have the chance to to talk. Just hello, hello, and I, I you, know, you are uh, uh, entering this magical place with all these paintings and the Palio Cristalos and the lights and, the, you know, it's, uh, her place is an overwhelming place. The second time I met her was at, uh, at my friend Hint Sharif Nasser. We were invited to, a, 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 to, a, to their farm for lunch. That's when we sat and we talked and uh, we discussed so many things. And uh, she told me, uh, I, about her class, that she had started giving classes uh, on, on Wednesdays. And she invited me to go to the class. I went, uh, uh, so I, I didn't go. I thought that she was just talking just uh, uh, like a person, that she wasn't serious. The next morning, her son, Prince Rat, calls me and says, my mother waited for you and you did not show up. Uh, so I apologize. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see that, that it was serious because I know she didn't like anybody to, to you know, she chose her students. We could not just uh, say, uh, walk in and say, I want to study at Farinisa Institute. 
so of course the following uh, the following Wednesday I went running, and ever since I did not leave that uh, I did not leave the institute. So Farinis as an institute, you know, she was a pioneer in her uh, in her way of teaching, uh, in uh, in her life, in her you know she gave us a fifty years experience of her philosophy, her ideas, like on a golden plate. I mean, we were so lucky. It wasn't a school, an art institute like, like any other art institute. We were all adult students who had seen, who had experienced in life, who had seen, visited the museums, uh, who traveled, except for two young, uh, of two, a couple of young ones, but we were all mature people, mature students. And, uh, and she see, would yeah. uh, tell us, uh, she, you would like to, to see, uh, to, so shall I speak or shall I? Uh, yes, please, please continue, I'm very interested. Yes. I can continue? Yes, please do. So, every Wednesday we went to her place. Uh, we took the work that we had done the previous week and she, we would discuss it. If the, she didn't like the work, she would say, oh, go put this in the children's room. It meant that the work is no good. <laughs> go throw it away. But, uh, but, but the beautiful thing about her is that she told us, uh, what she taught us is, if you have a song to sing or a story to tell, let it emerge from your subconscious. And this is the road to the truth. So that was the perfect, the perfect statement for me. For I didn't. I never like to, to 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 go to follow the rules or follow the books. Or, so that's that's what really art is. You know, art is. It's not only the colors and the forms and the techniques, but you have to put your soul into it. Um, so uh, Ophelia, we see on the right now, a, a testimonial from uh, Fakhr Nasa Zaid who was born around 1900, so she was 83 years old when she wrote you this, uh, this, tes this testimony. And she says that uh, you have succeeded and you will succeed. Um, and she really speaks so highly of your work. Uh, it must be very special to have this, this document as well uh, and to have studied under Fakhr al-Nisa. Um, is, this, is this something you feel that has changed your life, that has changed your tra trajectory as an artist? Oh, of course, of course, this has changed all. Uh, Far and Nisa, they changed all my life. You know, it, uh, you know, I found myself. You know, you you were searching like you are always searching in life, searching. That's then I found her. I mean, it was the perfect timing to, when I found her. And I believe that she had selected your works that went to France, which we'll be speaking about in a second. But I believe that she had personally intervened. Uh, to select some works by you. This is an image of the artist at her exhibition in Paris in uh, the late 1970s. Um, you yes. had a very successful exhibition, uh, Ufemia. Uh, you exhibited with Katya Granoff, who is uh, as large and important and uh, influential in the, in, as a gallery as Fakhr Nissa was an artist. So these were really two giants that had communicated with each other. One uh, taught you and one presented you to the world, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that story. I remember you mentioned it to me a few months ago. Fakhr Nissa had selected some works maybe that went to Paris. And how did this exhibition happen in Paris? Uh, okay. Uh, Farin Nisa uh, used to send her friend Katya Granoff. Katya Granoff was a very good friend. Uh, Farin Nisa had, had exhibited at that same gallery in 1970. She exhibited twice at uh, Katya Granoff. And they were very good friends. She would send Katya the pictures of the, her students' works. And Katya would comment on, on the work. So it seems that Katya uh, liked one of my works. Then Farinis Azet told me, you go to Paris, you take with you three works, <clears throat> and you call Katya Ganoff, make an appointment, and you go to show her. <clears throat> so that's what I did. But I knew about Katya Ganoff. You know, she was this severe lady that would go every morning to Carita to make her chignon and then go back to work behind her desk. 
I, I had seen pictures of her. You know, I was scared even to go to her place. So, but I cannot disobey my, my, my master. Uh, I went to the, uh, I went to Paris, I telephoned, I made an appointment, I go to the gallery. As it happened, there was an artist showing his work before me. And uh, I saluted and I sat on the side waiting until she finished. It. And the way she treated this other artist, I mean, I, in such an insulting way, I felt, I said, what did I come here to do? What did I come for? To get insulted by this old lady? <laughs> you know, it was, uh, finally, when he, she told him, Okay, you find a place, you go, you'll find a place that will accept to, to exhibit your work. Then she said, okay, come on, let's see, Euphemia, what you have to show. Uh, I didn't move, you know, I, uh, I let her secretary open the paintings, she put them against the wall, and uh, she was looking, examining with her eyes, uh, examining all sorts of, uh, and then she told her, okay, bring me this, bring me this painting. Uh, she brought it to her and then she started feeling the paint. I don't know why she felt the paint. And then, and then uh, she uttered the word finally, ah, quel bel matière. Uh, finally, I could breathe. <laughs> and that's how it happened. And she proposed to exhibit. Uh, well, she was, you know, it seemed that she really liked my work because she said, I will have an exhibition for you in November. It is the grand retrospective, the big retrospective of Picasso at the Grand Palais, and all the world is going to be in Paris. Oh, but for me, I never imagined that I would exhibit in such a place. Uh, so I kept quiet. I said, thank you, I will answer you. When I go back to Jordan and I tell this to, to, to Farinisa, they say, you are crazy, immediately you accept. So we wrote the letter and that's how it happened. End of story. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing that story. It's so interesting. Uh, so, Femia, I, I, I really don't usually ask these questions, but your dresses are just so beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about this dress that you're wearing? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, this dress is uh, from Egypt, from Ish Ish. That is the, the Umm Kulsum, uh, the Umm Kulsum uh, uh, writing on it, the sound of Umm Kulsum. Uh -huh. You know, in, in Europe, uh, or and anywhere, I like to, to wear oriental dresses, uh, I, you know, to, to show our orient, I mean. Well done, well done. Okay, so uh, this is an image of Katya Granov here on the right. Uh, we will yes. be seeing another photo of her. Um, but this is, this is the photo that I believe is the first time it's ever shown. If I'm not mistaken, the first time this, yes. photo, this photograph yes. is shown. Yes, and it's not very clear, I'm sorry, but... Uh, this is the, the, the only photo I could find of, uh, of, uh, of both of Farinis and Katya Granov with, with, uh, with me and uh, my daughter in the middle and uh, my late husband to the left. This risk. And so uh, uh, Fakhr Nisa is on the right uh, wearing that. Fakhr is on the right. And Katya and to Fakhr Nisa. Katya and is in the middle. That's Katya sitting behind her desk. That's the famous Katya always sitting behind her desk. That's when, the first time when I saw her, she was sitting behind this desk. And this is, these are the catalogs of your exhibition there in 1979, correct? On the table? Yes, that's the invitation card, up, uh, okay. the, the upper image. And it was on the left, under the, the patronage of Fahri Nisa Zain. Wow. And, and on the left is the poster of the, uh, the affiche. And the, the poster, yes. 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 Okay. Great, thank you. Well, um, it's, thank you for sharing this image. I feel partly responsible because I think it was ripped out and uh, I hope we can get it corrected. <laughs> I apologize <laughs> okay. for that. Um, so more images, okay. we won't spend too much time here, but obviously uh, your, uh, your, your exhibitions were visited by dignitaries and diplomats and people from, from uh, uh, officials from across the world. Um, I just wanted to show these two images because they're they're very important. This uh, poster on the left is a very important exhibition you had in Nancy in 1984. Again, we see the recurrent red color that you very much like. 
but I think moving forward, uh, you had another exhibition. This is in uh, the in 1981 or so, and we see uh, a different style altogether of your work. Uh, figures that you don't really spend too much time. I think it was a year or two of your life that you uh, paint these figures, and then you move away from them. Is that correct? Uh, I, you know, once a year I used to do one or two portraits. I did quite a few, but not many. The portrait to the right is one of the, when I passed the exam at Katia Granov, one, it was one of the three that I, that I took with me to show her. Because, you know, it's, uh, Faranis, I said, would tell me what I should take with me to Paris. When I went to show her the painting, this, the, the one to the right, the right is, is one of them. And the title is Atlant, the girl from Atlantis. And I see here, the, last continent. the former president of France, Jacques Chirac, um, what are the circumstances of this photo? Well, here there's a story. Shall I tell you the story? Yes, please, but in 30 seconds. <laughs> in 30 seconds, okay. Now, the painting in the middle, the Tranquillité, uh, uh, I was very privileged to have been accepted at the Salon d'Automne in 1980. So in 1980, uh, at the Salon d'Automne, I noticed that there, uh, there is a guest country showing the artwork of their uh, artists. When I went back to Jordan, uh, you know, I used to have my special Sunday morning uh, coffee with the, with the princess. That was our private uh, Sunday. That's every Sunday. Uh, I, I suggested, I got the idea, I suggested to the princess, what about us, Jordan, our beautiful country, why not try to represent it at the Salon d'Automne next year, as I saw there was a country represented uh, when I went to the Salon. Well, she was so excited about the idea and she jumped at the idea and then she wrote a letter immediately to, uh, to the president of the Salon d'Automne uh, asking him and we made it happen to cut the story short. We made it happen and she went, uh, it was uh, Paris Nisaze, uh, Princess Majdarad, Hind Nasser, Suha Shuman and myself. We were five exhibited, they gave us a very nice pavilion, and Monsieur Chirac was the mayor of Paris at the time. He, he was the, he inaugurated the exposition. Thank you exhibition. very much. Thank you, they're, they're lovely artworks. Um, I think this is also a, one of your monumental red paintings, uh, Saturn. I, I don't want to spend too much time with it, but can you tell us how big this work is? Because it's quite massive. Uh, this is like uh, three meters something by 175, I think. Well, you know, I was, uh, I'm very much into space, into the cosmos, into the unknown, into the planets. It was a, a period of my life that I painted so many planets. Uh, and this is uh, one of my major uh, planets that, uh, uh, and it, it, it was, this was one the Oscar winner uh, at the Biennale de Lyon. It's, uh, it has, the, this, this is the one that had a, an important award. This is Saturn. And here, the audience yeah, it's Saturn, the, the planet. I think it comes back. Yes. Okay, Th thank you. I just want to move on because uh, you only have 20 minutes left. <laughs> I don't know how time oh, passes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. So uh, okay. remember, this is uh, painting. yes, remember everybody, we talked, I told you earlier, the exhibition that Sit Uthania held in her home, the painting on the left where she was standing. These, this is the same artwork that was acquired by the king of uh, uh, Jordan, is that correct? Or the, uh, at least the, uh, the, the royal court maybe. And we see it here uh, exhibited behind the king and behind Queen Noor. Uh, this is the same painting, correct? Yes, yes. And um, th these, these works were uh, acquired from, from the gallery? I mean, what was the circumstances of acquiring artworks? In no, the late no, no, no. Uh, there was a private viewing for their majesties, King Hussein and Queen Noor. Uh, and they chose these two paintings, this one and another one. And I was greatly honored uh, to see my painting on TV when uh, His Majesty had the important guests and uh, to and then sometimes in the newspaper so i just this are the, the only picture that i could get uh, for me you know uh, it was a great uh, support you know they are support you know they support art a lot 
and it, they were a great support to me, by the way. Thank you, thank you, Ufemia. Uh, Ufemia, we'll spend maybe a, a short while on this artwork, which is very unusual for your work. Um, it won an award in Japan. Tell us about the story maybe of this work and the story of you exhibiting in Japan in the early 80s. Uh, exhibiting in Japan, I started exhibiting in Japan in 1980. You know, the Katya Granov exhibition opened many doors. Like the president du festival of Japan was present. They came to the exhibition and they proposed to me to join the festival uh, in Japan. It, it was in Osaka. Uh, I had, uh, I worked with China Inc. This is a very minute work with minute details. Like I told you, I, when I was young at school, I always liked to, you know, drawing, drawing lines, lines. I, I'm very linear. I'm geometric and linear. And this, you can, you can notice the very small lines that take hours and hours to do. Uh, so I sent uh, China inks to Japan and uh, they were very popular. You know, I never exhibited any China inks anywhere except, uh, they, I, I always sent them to Japan, to Osaka. They loved my China ink. Later on, I started experimenting and studying and working with Japanese ink on the Japanese paper. That's another story. Okay, thank you very much. Um, here we talk a little bit about these, again, unusual landscapes. Uh, by the early 80s, you started depicting what you said is the most beautiful city in the world, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, there are two artworks, uh, really. I could show you both works. Um, so there's this one, which is titled Jerusalem. And then there's this one, which has two titles, the Citadel or Jaffa uh, Gate. I'll go back to uh, the Jerusalem painting. Uh, what compelled you to uh, draw Jerusalem? Uh, you know, upon, uh, upon arrival from the east of the Jordan uh, Valley, if you're standing, uh, looking from the summit of the Mount of Olives, that's the, you have the most magnificent view. That's the view that you have. We used to go always, you know, I lived in Egypt, but in summer we used to go to Jordan and we used to go to Jerusalem always. Every summer we used to go to visit. You know, it was open, it was one country. So, you know, the holy city, uh, the holy city where, uh, you know, you hear the Muslim calling for the prayers, you hear the church bells ringing. On special occasions, the shofar ringing for, uh, for, for, for the prayers. You know that you are in the essence of Oriental civilization. I mean, uh, a holy place with, uh, for holy calls with different melodies. Uh, I saw myself uh, unconsciously drawing the wall of Jerusalem on a, on a canvas that had been lying on, the, on my easel for weeks. I didn't know what to do with it. Very often, you don't know how to start the painting. And then it went on and on. I took, uh, I did it from memory. It took me three months. I worked for three months on this painting. And it was with so much passion and joy and emotions. Uh, of course, it's under this uh, heavy sky that lies the cradle of civilization. We witnessed so many, all the, all the, all the prophets all, throughout all these centuries. And uh, the, the dark, the dark foreground is to represent my sadness for the situation that the city is in. Thank you. And then there's <clears throat> uh, also a similar monumental uh, artwork. We won't spend too much, uh, too much time with it, but you sort of focus on a specific part of Jerusalem uh, here. Yeah, is there this any is a reason, section. Is, is yeah. there any reason you focus on the Jaffa Gate? You know, that's uh, in Arabic, Bab al Khalil. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, it's called Bab al Khalil in Arabic. Uh, that's, that's from where we used to enter the old Jerusalem. Uh, and I love stone. You know, this, this is like a small de work with details with stone. I'm an earth person. I love, I love working with stone. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Um, moving on, uh, I, this is an exhibition you had. We won't spend too much time here, but the exhibition you had in uh, Amman uh, in 1983. Uh, we see, uh, the, we see Saturn here that monumental painting I told you about earlier, a number of other works that we recognize. Uh, it's, uh, we see by the early 80s, Amman now having a ma massive cultural center. I feel like there is a tide that is changing with regards to exhibiting art, 
your work also takes uh, a, a, another uh, shift here with these geometric abstract uh, work, almost cubic in nature. And then by 1986, uh, Ufemia, you had this major exhibition that was inaugurated by Princess Alia of Jordan, but this was almost, uh, there, there was two important parts to this image. Uh, number one, she wasn't supposed to be there, at least not alone. Uh, there was someone else supposed to be there. Uh, and also there was an incident after the show or there was an occurrence after the show. Uh, can you tell us about what <clears throat> happened? Well, uh, this was my last exhibition in Jordan in, in spring 86. Uh, first Princess Farinisa was supposed to come and, and uh, inaugurate the exhibition. She was sick, she went to the hospital, she was not well. So she delegated Her Royal Highness Princess uh, Halia to inaugurate the exhibition. And uh, after this exhibition, uh, for some unforeseen circumstances, I stopped painting for almost uh, a year and a half. I did not, I stopped painting. That was my last painting in Jordan in 1986. Thank you. And now we come closer to where I am uh, and a place that uh, had a big role to play uh, in, even in my uh, early childhood, the Cultural Foundation in Abu Dhabi, which is uh, one of the most uh, significant uh, uh, cultural um, spaces anywhere, I think in the, in the UAE or even the Gulf. Uh, you had a massive exhibition. You took over the entire foyer. You had uh, uh, many works. And uh, we even see here uh, some of the paintings that we recognize. There's the Saturn painting once again. Um, and, then, uh, and then of course you're wearing a lovely red dress. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the exhibition in Abu Dhabi, how it came about? What are your memories of the Cultural Foundation in the 1980s? Well, this was an amazing, amazing time of my life. It was a most wonderful, uh, first of all, because this is what took me out of my, uh, to go back to painting. Because I had stopped painting until I got this offer uh, from the Abu Dhabi Cultural Foundation in collaboration with the Jordanian Embassy and Mr. Sami Sleiman, who, who was uh, sponsoring. Uh, it was uh, all the three, together, they, I, I received this invitation to exhibit. And that took me out of my, of my, that I had to go back to paint, to painting and to paint hard because uh, it was going to be a big exhibition. And it was a great successful exhibition. Now they offered me the, the cultural center main hall. Uh, you know, they are so generous and so kind, I cannot tell you about the, the, the cultural center, how, how wonderful they were. They gave me a whole team and said, this is the whole, you do with it what you want. We have electricians, we have people to help you. Uh, and we transformed it into an art gallery. They used to have exhibitions, but I don't, I don't think, I'm not sure if they had painting exhibitions before in that place. I'm not sure, I cannot tell you. But, uh, and there was a, an, an artist, Maya, Maya Makawi, well, who was uh, uh, for a long time an artist there who helped me. It doesn't show here, but she helped me, you know, to, to arrange, to put the flowers. She wrapped them with like a, with drapery, the, the pots of flowers. She's a great artist there. Uh, now the opening was, uh, was fantastic. Uh, many, many important uh, local figures, personalities came and uh, many diplomats and a very supportive, uh, a very supportive uh, uh, Abu Dhabi public, which shows the generosity of the Emirati society. I mean, the local society was wonderful. And the wonderful thing is that I loved most about this exhibition is that many, many uh, colleges and uh, schools uh, from different provinces came and visited the, the, the show which was for me something very, very important. And one of the, one of the uh, one, many, one of the important people who were at the, at the opening was uh, uh, 
the general manager of the Adnac, the petroleum company, the Abu Dhabi, uh, Mr. Uh, Suhail Al Mazrui. Okay. I don't know if you know this name. Yeah. Yes, it's a familiar name. Um, and I, the one last thing I want to mention about this show is that they filmed it by video, and I think they gave you a copy of the video. Is that correct? Yes, unfortunately, they sent me everything with, by video. It's the old-fashioned VHS that I still have, and I cannot retrieve anything from it. They, here, they don't. I have to be, take it back to the Middle East to, to copy it into a CD or something and make picture. Yes. So, Femia, this is something I promise you I will work with you to try and retrieve and try and digitize the video because we oh, want thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sultan. Okay. Thank you. I will try to move a little bit faster. Um, yes, yes, so yes. We maybe just, uh, maybe just talk uh, in general about these works. These are newer works. So here we're jumping uh, a big jump into the 21st century. Yeah. And yes. maybe tell us uh, in general the idea of creating these currency works. Okay, now this currency, as it happened, I have these uh, very old currencies. Uh, it's, you know, it's the first uh, pound, the first 10 pounds, the first, uh, you know, the first of everything. It's not just any currency. The, well, the one to the right is the first, uh, is the first 10, uh, 10 uh, Palestinian dinars. Uh, in 19, uh, it was issued in 1929. And the one to the left is the, the one pound. I happen to have these currencies, and I have the Iraqi currency, but the Jordanian currency, I had the one pound, the first one, but I didn't have the 10. A very generous, generous friend, uh, Mr. Jamal Abishahin, offered to send me a, a photo of this one to work on it. He told me, no, you do the 10, it's, it's more important. And uh, these are on paper, you know, all uh, archive ink, archive ink paper, uh, paper Hanemühle, the German etching paper, you know, very good quality. And it's a limited edition of 36 of each. Uh, the Iraqi is the first, uh, it's the second edition of the first Iraqi uh, bond because here it's the King Faisal. When they, when he became king, they just changed the photo, but the, the, the dinar is the same. Okay. Um, I was really interested in why you depicted currencies, uh, if there is a specific reason. If not, we can move on. You know what? Uh, because, you know, uh, uh, I started with the Palestinian currencies because, you know, Palestine is important to me. I'm originally Palestinian. And my late husband is Palestinian. Uh, uh, so, uh, and I happen to have these currencies. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a very unorganized person. I lose everything and everything, but I, I don't know how these currencies, I found them. So I said, let me do some artwork with these currencies. <laughs> That's a good idea. Do, do an artwork with them before they get lost. That's a wonderful idea. Yeah, before I lose them. <laughs> okay, so moving on, because I, I want to just sh spend time in the last slide, but um, uh, two, two quick slides. This is, um, again, 21st century. We see you uh, still going back to Jaffa, even uh, almost 20, 30 years later, Palestine is still a major theme in your work. This is from 2008. Um, I don't want to spend too much time with these works. Um, and okay, very you, quickly. A bit yeah, okay. Okay. We go back, sorry. No, no, خلاص, خلاص, oh, that, that we, uh, you go ahead, you have a minute if you want to talk about this work. No, no, I have to say at least one word about Jaffa. The bride of the ocean or the sea, yes. You know, Jaffa, it's, it's an ancient city that was founded almost 1500 BC you know, and occupied by the Hathmos III, by the pharaohs. You know, it's a, you know, I had visited Jaffa in, uh, in the early 80s, but it came out, you know, I painted it only in uh, 25 years later. You know, this is when you say when the subconscious emerges, that's an example. That's the higher self. Yeah. Uh, and you know, Jaffa is Jaffa, it's a beautiful city. With the, with the, the colors, and the, I don't want you to spend more time. And the one to the, to the right is uh, one of my most recent work uh, to, to, to end with a happy note, because I wanted to show you the, the, my last painting. You said, no, no, we don't want any corona paintings. <laughs> so I put this one to end it to the, on a happy note. We have one last work, though, which is um, the Universal Dialogue. 
2014. Uh, can you tell us the idea of universal dialogue? Uh, sorry, this is this is the the this is this is it's not the right uh, title, but it's okay. This is untitled. This painting untitled. is untitled. Okay. What is the what is uh, the uh, idea of this work? Well, the idea behind this painting, I had seen that movie uh, that a friend of mine had produced uh, here in Montreal, the first year I came. Uh, yes. the, I, I will say the title in English because it's easier. The tree that dies dreams of its roots. Mm -hmm. So that was my representation, my idea, the, how I saw it. That the tree that dies never really dies. Uh, and you know, with the, my reds, my greens, my blues, and uh, you know, it's the, the subconscious emerging to the surface. Uh, thank you. The, actually, the last slide I'd like to show is this one. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is when I met you the first time. I had the great honor and privilege of meeting you uh, in New York in January 2020. Um, we were with my students as well, who introduced you, and uh, about 600 people were there. Uh, this is the artwork that we are showing in New York uh, that you exhibited. Uh, I think in the uh, that was shown in the magazine, uh, and it was exhibited in the late 70s as well in the early 80s, and it was in your house before you went to Paris, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 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 so my first, my first exhibition, very first exhibition. And uh, so, and you also, when, when I asked you to choose uh, an image for this, uh, for, for the, I said, I would like to show your picture with the artwork in New York because it's 2020, uh, and uh, you specifically asked for this work, actually for this photo. I didn't have it. I had a photo of many people, but you said, I want a yes. photo with, the, with the Sid Sami Halabi. Uh, so yes. tell us why you chose this photo. I'm curious to know. Well, I have always admired uh, Sami Halabi's work. I'm a great fan of her, of, her, of her work. And I had the honor of meeting her uh, at this exhibition, which was great for me, finally, to meet the Sami Halabi, the, our great artist. I mean... Uh, and uh, we took a picture together. That's, uh, I think that's the best picture to show with one, with one of the greatest art, living artists. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah. and the Grey Gallery, the, the Grey Gallery exhibition abstract, uh, uh, abstraction from the Arab world. I mean, it was such a wonderful, it was such a wonderful exhibition, you know, how to how to you could gather all these paintings of all these from all these arab uh, great arab artists all under one roof showing them at the great art gallery and while you that was a great a great uh, a great event to to have all these uh, art lovers under one roof in new york city uh, just for the sake of art it was a fantastic a fantastic show and the show that was followed also even by the by the live music uh, that completed the, the whole the whole evening. Uh, Sultan, I must say, I, I personally I was greatly honored to be part of this exhibition, and uh, and to be uh, to be with all these great artists. And I was so happy to meet the Afaf Zere also, a great artist. I wish there were more new artists that I could meet at that at that show. Maybe they show up in the next one, in the, on, the, on the next stop. I will definitely go and follow. I, you have to see these paintings more than once. And uh, thank you for the Barjil Art Foundation for showing my work. And uh, most of all, thank you so much to Sultan al Qasimi who, who gathered and put up all this. We must, uh, you know, you have the title of a great ambassador of Arab art to the world. That's uh, really, thank you, thank you. Thank you, that, that was not planned at all, <laughs> by the way. No. <laughs> but before, before, I wanted to hand it over to uh, Sid Samia and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Adela, if they, would say, if they would be willing to say something, I, I'll stop sharing uh, so that we have a bigger screen here. Uh, Sid, uh, only if Sid Samia is willing to say something, uh, yes, is that yes or no? That's a yes, okay. So I'm unmuting you, Sid Samia, if you want to talk, Go ahead. So wonderful to have been in the same show with you, Euphemia. 
I've just enjoyed this hour so much learning about your career. I'm so impressed with the paintings, your abstractions, your early abstractions were so brave. And uh, I really, we know a lot of people in common and uh, just coming back to the show at the Great Art Gallery, for me as, as someone living so far away, these little events that uh, Sultan has created where we could meet, you know, for me, these little events of meeting artists from uh, uh, social, uh, not from the environment, national environment that I've been denied because I live so far away and because I'm an, uh, an exile from Palestine. They become very special. So I thank you for them. And I remember the stories, you know, Hen and Nawal Halabi, I forget their second name. It may have been Atan when she was married. You may have been in classes with her and Suha Shuman. And I remember talk about Fahrin Nissa, and I was thinking what wonderful teaching she had done. And I could discern some of the abstract ideas that were revolutionary in Europe that she had absorbed. Anyway, I was told the story that once she was telling one of her students, if you follow a fly going down the window, what path does it take? You know, think of the line it draws. That idea always stayed in my head about motion and, and time and painting. Anyway, I don't want to go on too long. It's been really a great hour. And thank you for all the work you've done, both of you, you and Sultan. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and then the last minute I'll give to uh, Adela to, uh, to close. Uh, Adela, I am asking you to unmute. Um, Adela, just maybe a quick roundup. So introducing Adela is one of the great scholars. Uh, she's uh, directing the Palestinian Museum and she p published a book about Fakhr and Nissa. She was a guest earlier as well at the Cultural Majlis. Please uh, go ahead, Adela. Victoria. Hi. Shukran Sultan, our issue for having me. Uh, thank you for inviting Fufu. Fufu, you look amazing. I'm so happy people are having this opportunity to, uh, to get to know you. And I say hello to everybody online that I know, including Leila. So, uh, I just wanted to contextualize a few things. However, I do remember that exhibition, which was in uh, Fufu's house. I don't know why I couldn't go to it. My mother told me, no, it's late, it's not for you. And I was like, why is she having an exhibition in her, in her home? This is so odd. And I didn't know it because it was for before you went to Paris. However, I don't know if this was mentioned, but Fakhrinissa's first solo exhibition was in 1944 in her home in Istanbul. Okay? Of course, there were historical reasons that happened to be the same in Istanbul in the, in the 40s and then in Amman, you know, decades later. Um, I want to say that Fufu not only exhibited uh, at the Salon d'Automne, uh, she also exhibited in 1986 there was an exhibition at the Luxembourg Museum of uh, Jordanian art, and Fufu was also in it with uh, Fakhr Nessa Zaid and a few students from the group of Fakhr Nessa. Uh, then what I remember, sorry Fufu, but this is how I remember it. In, um, Fufu was always traveling, was always exhibiting, and she was always getting awards. And Anna, I remember I was like, wow, not only she's a nice lady, friend of my parents, beloved of Fakhr Nissa, but she's winning all these awards. But this is my impression of her. Uh, now, of course, with the, with, the, with the hindsight, I think that Fufu's uh, Euphemia, Euphemia's words, especially the ones from the 80s, are a very clear, clear, clear distillation of what lyrical abstraction is. And Fakhr Nissa was a top uh, practitioner of lyrical uh, abstraction in its post-war uh, incarnation, and we can see this very well revived in, in those works by. But Thank also, we can see. Thank you, Adela. Thank you. Yeah, we got to stop, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sit um, Ufemia. Uh, um, I have to bring this to a close. We have gone about four or five minutes over time. But I just want to say what a great, great honor it was to host you and what a great honor it was working with you and meeting with you the past few weeks, going over the slides. Thank you so much for letting me into your, into your home. Thank you so much for showing me your, 
uh, your, you know, your family albums and being so open with sharing uh, really personal images, some of, some of which have never been seen before uh, with, with almost 100 people who are here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much to Suha Lallas, who sent me uh, uh, many lovely works from uh, Wadi Finan Gallery. Uh, thank you to my students, uh, Ines and uh, Nadine, uh, who introduced uh, Ufemi and interviewed her for an upcoming documentary about uh, Arab art. Hopefully, we're still working on it. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Sid Ufemiya, there's so many questions, but we couldn't pose them. Um, if you'd like to say anything, uh, I'll give you 20 seconds, and, and then we close. OK. And I just want to tell you that it is my honor to be hosted by you, by your majlis. I mean, the honor is mine. Uh, I'm very happy, and thank you so much. I want to thank you for everything, for all your effort, for all the, the hard work. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you all. Uh, for uh, all the people who are present, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, well, that's that, that's all I can say. Thank, thank you, you so much. I, I you. hope that we see, I hope that we see your exhibition again in the Cultural Foundation. So, I hope so. I hope to see you next time at the so. next stop of the of the exhibition. Thank you, Alarasi, Sit Ufamia. Thank you very much, thank everybody. Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Thank and good you day, so whatever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.